Hi friends, Aetheria here, and today I am doing another quality of life updates that you overlooked video, and we're just going to be looking through the patch notes, the preliminary patch notes of 7.0, because you guys, I want to play Dawn Trail when it comes out, so I'm not going to be doing one of my normal quality of life videos. We're going to do this based on the patch notes so that I can enjoy the game too. Actually, you probably don't expect me to put out a video for like two-ish weeks once Dawn Trail comes out. So anyways, let's just get into it. We're going to be focusing specifically on quality of life and nothing else, so if you want to see other stuff, you're going to have to go to another channel or just read the patch notes yourself. So the first quality of life update we have is that players can now temporarily hide the display of nearby player characters when interacting with quest-related NPCs or objects. So I'm sure if any of you guys have ever played around a launch before or just during new patches, usually there's so many players standing around the NPC and some people don't like that. It can be hard to click. So they have added this setting. It says adjust the setting via the character configuration menu by selecting control settings followed by the general tab. Then checking or unchecking the options under quest progression settings. You will have the option of hide nearby players when close to quest NPCs and hide nearby players when interacting with quest NPCs. Enabling the first option will temporarily hide nearby players when you approach NPCs or objects with a quest icon. And then the second one is enabling this option will temporarily hide nearby players when you interact with NPCs or objects with a quest icon. An option is available to also hide party members. These options are only applicable to NPCs or objects with a quest icon. These options will not be applied to players that are targeted or force targeted. These options are not applicable to certain quests. Another new thing they've added is quest objectives that require following an NPC will now utilize visual indicators to help players avoid detection. So here is the indicator that players risk being seen should the NPC they're following turn around. And then there's another indicator that players should not approach. I'm assuming this one is like if you step in that circle, you get seen. So I guess we might have some quests in Dawn Trail that are going to allow us to be sneaky, perhaps. But that's what this is. I think there's one of these in um, Endwalker as well, which I think is what the picture is from. That's that. Continuing on, players can now select icons in the duty list to carry out quest objectives such as using emotes or opening the crafting log. But please note, as of the release of Dawn Trail, this feature is only applicable to quests implemented in patch 7.0. Implementation for past quests is planned in future updates. So this is a thing that kind of already exists a little bit, like if you have a quest item, like sometimes you have quests where you have to like throw a little bomb or something and usually you would click this area here and it would have the item and you could use it and now it looks like they're doing it with emotes as well so you won't have to open the emote menu you won't have to type it in chat you'll be able to just click it on your screen uh, in this little text area here Players may now adjust text auto advance settings to apply only to voiced dialogue. So if you want the voice dialogue to just go, um, usually for this text auto advance um, keyboard, you press space bar and it'll turn on the setting. You will give you the option to turn it on. So now it looks like you'll be able to have it set so that the voice dialogue will all move on its own, but it won't do the text. So you'll have time to actually read it because I know for some of us, we end up missing out on that if we turn on the auto advanced for voice and then it turns into text dialogue after. So that can be frustrating, so that's a nice change. To help alleviate issues with missed inputs when completing quest objectives that require entering phrases with the chat mode in say, certain half width and full width characters will now be treated as the same character when typing. I think what they mean by this is case sensitivity. So, there's a lot of like beast tribe quests where you have to say something like 
in Shadowbringers with the fairies, there's one where you have to say like Snailing, or I think one of them where you have to say like Beaver, and it's always really funky because if you don't type it exactly the way that it tells you to, it won't work. So my guess is what they mean by this is that case sensitivity will no longer matter, and it doesn't matter if you use uppercase or lowercase letters. I hope that's what it means anyway. Okay, and now under Fates, we have this one. The game client will now respond more quickly when opening the shared fate window or changing between categories, because that was always really slow. Another thing they've done with Fates, large-scale Fates that take place at fixed locations will now also appear on the map, like regular Fates. So what they mean by this is, I believe, the special Fates, because the Omicron Recall is the Chi Fate, where you can get the little hopping television mount from, so those are now going to be on the map. Next, they have added a new system called the Estate Holder Rights System, and that will be implemented. So what this does is players can now eject characters from their estate hall or garden and bar characters from entering their property. To bar a character from your property, you must first be on your estate grounds and have the requisite authority. Target the character you wish to bar, and select Bar from Property in the subcommand menu. Then, choose Register as Barred Character. They will be ejected from the estate grounds and moved to the housing area entrance. Barred characters will remain on the barred characters list for 10 days. During this time, any attempts to enter your estate hall or garden will instead transport them to the housing area entrance. To view or adjust these settings, select Housing from the social menu followed by estate settings, then estate holder rights. Authorization settings will differ according to the type of residence. Free company estates. The free company master is the main rights holder and may appoint up to four free company members as secondary rights holders. Personal estates. The estate owner is the main rights holder and may appoint up to three tenants as secondary rights holders. Apartments or private chambers. The apartment or private chambers owner is the main rights holder and cannot appoint secondary rights holders. And then this is a little separate note here. It should be noted that when secondary rights holders with the setting enabled are present on an estate, characters on their blacklist may also be denied access to the property. Which rights holders blacklist will be included to determine who is barred from the estate may be adjusted via the estate holder rights window. So some things to note about this is basically what this is, is that if there's somebody that is coming onto your property in game, Obviously, you can boot them out. It's kind of sad that it only lasts for 10 days and it's not like a long-term blacklist, but it also seems like if a player is on your blacklist, maybe they will remain on this list because that's what it's saying down here. Either way, this is a really, really nice change because if you ever have anybody harassing you in-game, obviously you can lock your, uh, your estate but that sucks because then your friends can't come in. So this is a really nice change because it'll allow you to boot people off of your estate who are bothering you while still allowing your friends to come and join you. And from the sounds of it, they won't even be able to go uh, through the gate of your estate and like go into your outdoor area, which is really, really cool. Um, so that's a fantastic change. Another housing related one, after entering the lottery for an estate, Viewing the placard for a different plot before confirming the results of your entry will now remind you of the estate address of the plot you bid on. I guess before it didn't tell you the address, and now it will. Next, they have actually made some changes to Island Sanctuary. When selecting the plus button on the Isleworks Agenda interface, players can now choose whether Set Agenda or Supply and Demand is the default window that opens. From the Isle Keeps Index, select Sanctuary Settings, then Default Agenda Settings under the Workshop tab. The Sanctuary Gathering Log can now be opened via the Material Allocation window. The Material Allocation window will now save sorting settings. When selling materials in bulk via the Enterprising Exporter, the quantity set may now be saved for future transactions. So it sounds like largely it's just going to be saving some of your settings, and then there's a couple differences in the way you can change your settings here. The following additions and adjustments have been made to the duty finder. The only really important one here is when undertaking duties using unrestricted party option, players can now elect to leave a duty even during combat. So if you go in somewhere unsynced and you're in the middle of combat and you're like, I don't want to be in here anymore, this is taking too long, you can just leave. 
you don't have to finish killing things you don't have to find a way to die sometimes it's super frustrating because if you go into like a lower level trial or something and you decide you want to leave you're just kind of stuck there because the boss like is having a hard time killing you and if you can't like just jump off or jump into the wall you're just kind of stuck so this is so nice to be able to leave mid combat especially since it's unsynced anyway this next one i'm not sure what they mean by this but it says the raid finder now only lists trials and duties introduced with patch 7.0 is the raid finder the party finder why are they calling it raid finder when in game it's called party finder i don't know is that just like a weird translation but it does say that you'll still be able to do all of these ultimates you'll be able to access them via the raid finder so i don't know what this means but i felt like i should include it because maybe it's quality of life i have no clue Okay, and now they have added an entirely new system for glasses because a lot of people want to be able to wear glasses and hats at the same time. So initially they had made some glasses into fashion accessories, but now they are making the fashion accessory glasses into something called a face wear that will have its own little slot in your character window. So face wear, a new form of accessories for the head separate from other equipable accessories has been added. Face wear can be equipped via a new equipment slot in the character window or by accessing the face wear interface under character in the main menu and will also appear in portraits. Face wear can be acquired by using corresponding items such as a copy of the faces we wear oval spectacles. Once acquired, they can be freely equipped or removed at any time and customized with a selection of 12 colors. Actually, I don't think the fashion accessories had colors at all, so this is actually an upgrade. I'm assuming that actual fashion pieces, like actual glamour pieces of glasses are still in the game because this has saying that it's changing fashion accessories. So it says the following fashion accessories have been converted into face wear false oval spectacles false shaded spectacles false classic spectacles rose colored spectacles players will now acquire face wear in place of the aforementioned fashion accessories the fashion accessories listed above will no longer appear in fashion accessories window however players who acquired them prior to patch 7.0 may obtain corresponding face wear free of charge by speaking with the calamity salvagers located in limbs of Gridanian and Ulda. It should also be noted that the items used to acquire these fashion accessories have not been removed from the game. If one is in your inventory or obtained via trading or the market board, it can be used to obtain the corresponding face wear. Next, the item icons for files of Fantasia and Retainer Fantasia will now include a marker to better distinguish them from one another. So your normal Fantasia will have like a little person on it, where the Retainer Fantasia has uh one of those like onion knight tomato dudes i don't know what they're called but that's what it looked like to me the next big quality of life update is probably one you guys have heard about but they are adding to die channel so we will have more control over how our stuff looks so up to two dies can now be used on a single piece of gear Gear that allows more than one die will display two separate die tabs in the item dying window. Additional gear that allows for multiple dies will be added gradually in the future. Following this change to dying, currently selected instant portraits may need to be edited. Undo color selection and redo color selection buttons have been added to the item dying window. After selecting a color, it can now be set as a favored die. An option to preview preferred color schemes using favored dies has been added. An option to preview a previously applied color scheme has been added. An option to invert colors selected as die 1 and die 2 has been added. A marker indicating no dyes have been applied to an item has been added. When previewing your character's appearance while using a gamepad, players can now press R1 or RB to switch between color categories. So basically they have changed the die system. It's going to be hard to really understand how it works until we can get in there and play with it ourselves. But they're adding two dies. This is what the interface is going to look like. We can choose favorite dies and then we can toggle between different die setups. I think it's just going to be really nice uh, for giving us a preview and allowing us to customize our dies the way that we like them. The following items can now be equipped regardless of gender. Fairy tale, princess circlet, gloves, boots, vest, slops, 
and fairy tale princesses dress, long skirt, tiara, gloves, and heels. Sundry Splendor is a one-stop shop for gear and items purchased in exchange for elegant tombstones and scripts has been added to Sh Old Charlian. The shop is unlocked after completing the main scenario quest Endwalker and you'll see it's right by the Aetherite. They do this in basically every expansion, like every time a new expansion comes out, the old expansion will get a merchant. So for example, if you go to Crystarium in Shadowbringers, there's a Moen's Merchant that's right by the Aetherite, and this just makes it really easy for you to go get your Crypt Lurker gear or any of the Poetics gear that came out in Shadowbringers. Similarly, any of the Raid gear is also available at the Merchant. So that'll be the same, or it should be the same for Endwalker as well. So this Merchant will have basically a bunch of old gear and stuff that came from Endwalker, but it also says script, so it should have crafting and gathering stuff, so it's easy for getting older stuff. The time until actions may be used after consuming certain medicinal items has been reduced. So I'm assuming if you're a raider and you forget to eat your raid food and you're worried about it ruining your opener, it, may, it might still ruin it a little bit, but it will at least be reduced. So that's definitely a nice change. After using the following items to grant a boost to experience points earned from synthesis, a system message will now be displayed when their effect expires. So we have company issued engineering, survival, engineering 2, survival 2, commercial engineering, commercial survival, revised survival, revised engineering manuals. Basically, there just is going to be a log message. So you will see when they expire. I'm guessing it's going to be one of those big ones that kind of comes across the screen the way like your uh the way it does when you sell something, where it's like, so-and-so bought your crap on the market board. I think it might be one of those. Not sure, but I'm hoping it will be because that would be like the best way for people to notice it because I personally wouldn't really notice it if it was in my chat box. So here's the hoping. Next, the categories under special recipes in the crafting log have been adjusted. Basically, it looks like they're just compiling them a little bit. So instead of having Restoration 1, 2, 3, and 4, it's just Restoration. So it should be a little bit easier to read and navigate because there won't be so many of them. The following minor and botanist actions can no longer be used when a gathering point is at maximum integrity. Solid reason, wise to the world, ageless words, and again, wise to the world. I'm guessing this is just so that you don't waste your GP. Then similarly, a gathering window will now display the integrity of a gathering point. So you'll be able to see that. The fish guide will now indicate whether a fish requires precision hook set or powerful hook set to catch. GP will no longer be reduced to zero when players are incapacitated as a non-gathering class. I'm guessing if you like die and then switch to gathering you have zero, I'm not sure. That's what I'm assuming. The following changes have been made to desynthesis. The kind of more important one than the level cap would probably be these last two. When using quick desynthesis, canceling will now close the window if all items have been desynthesized. After checking the desynthesize an entire stack box in the desynthesis window, this option will remain checked even after desynthesizing unstackable or single items. So you don't have to check it every time. The following adjustments and additions have been made to character creation. These additions and adjustments are also applied to character editing via Fantasia Retainer Selection and character editing via the Esthetician. So we have the new lighting, which if you guys have checked out Benchmark, you will have seen that we get a new lighting option. And they also tried to fix the background lighting in all the other places, but in this ethereal one, you get two different kinds of lighting. This one I think is really cool. Character combat voice lines can now be sampled, so it shouldn't just be random huh, <laughs> and uh -uh sounds it should hopefully have some sort of voice line i guess i'm not sure but that should make it a little bit easier to choose a voice and then class selection is now grouped by roles similarly we have when using the esthetician the display of headgear and face wear can now be toggled on or off which is so nice because sometimes you forget to take your hat off and you kind of just want to see how things look without it this one is also really, really huge. One of my favorite changes they're making. When editing character appearance by way of Fantasia, players will have 60 minutes of in-game playtime from the initial usage to re-edit their appearance as many times as they desire. And you can see they have in this picture, if you wish, you can edit your character's race, sex, and appearance. 60 minutes remaining, so it'll tell you how much longer you have. So this is super cool. 
you make your character with your Fantasia, you go in the game, and you're like, oh, it actually, I don't like how her nose looks here, and you can go back. And you've got 60 minutes of playtime, which means if you close the game, and you haven't used up that 60 minutes, the next time you open it, that timer will start ticking again, but if you're not playing and the game is closed, then that timer stops, because it's playtime, not just like real, real time. So that's super cool. The following adjustments have been made to target information. When a target's remaining HP is set to be displayed as a percentage, decimal values will now always be shown. When the setting display only detrimental effects you inflict is enabled, it will only be applied to enemy targets. Following this change, the name of the setting has been adjusted to display only detrimental effects you inflict on target. Next, the following additions and adjustments have been made to the actions and traits window. The default view of the actions tab will now separate actions that can and cannot be assigned to the hotbar. A new option has been added, allowing players to choose whether certain actions will be replaced by another on the hotbar when executed, meaning I believe they would use the same button. So you use one and if it's part of a combo then it would become the other one, I think. A new option has been added to enable a recast timer to prevent erroneous inputs of actions that replace others on the hotbar upon execution. I wonder if this would help ninjas avoid the bunny, but I'm not sure. A glamour guide has been added to the following windows explaining the usage of various fashion related features such as dyes and glamours. This guide can be accessed at any time via the question mark icon in each window and it'll be in the windows for item dyeing, cast glamour, glamour dresser, glamour plates, armor, and facewear. A button to temporarily hide the display of the chat log has been added. That sounds nice. The following changes have been made to alarms. The maximum number of alarms that can be set has been increased from 10 to 30. The character limit for alarm names has been increased from 10 to 20. The layout of the alarm editor interface has changed. Simplified alarm settings are now displayed by default. Additional options are available after selecting the down arrow for advanced settings. The display of advanced settings will be saved even after closing the alarm editor interface. Sound options are now available for alarms. Super nice, that's gonna be great. Alarm sounds can now be muted while undertaking duties. Super cool updates to alarms. Another big update is the blacklist. Characters registered to the blacklist will be hidden. When joined in a party or alliance, their character will be displayed. However, their name will be displayed as unknown in the party list and on their nameplate. Messages from characters registered to the blacklist will be hidden. When joined in a party or alliance, a notification will be displayed when they speak during duties. After receiving a notification of blacklisted messages, players may elect to temporarily see what was written via the subcommand menu. Blacklisting will apply to all characters tied to the blacklisted character's service account. Blacklisting for party recruitment will now also apply to all characters tied to a service account. A system message will be displayed if a blacklisted player joins a party you're in, or if you join a party that contains a blacklisted player. New blacklist functionality will not be applied to characters tied to a blacklisted character's service account if they were registered prior to patch 7.0. The blacklist tab has been removed from the social window and will now be displayed in its own window found under social in the main menu. Players can now save comments regarding blacklisted characters. Maybe you can like write what they did to you. Blacklisted characters and all characters tied to their service account will also be subject to the lodestone blocked users list. So this is really nice because basically not only are you going to be able to hide people because in the past you blacklist someone, they could still like follow you around and mode at you and just kind of try to be annoying in that way. But now you won't even be able to see their character. And aside from that, it will uh, blacklist every uh, character on their service account. So they can't just make new characters to harass you with. They will automatically be blacklisted. However, it does look like there's some issues because it says new blacklist functionality will not be applied to characters tied to a blacklisted character's service account if they were registered prior to patch 7.0 so that might be kind of kind of an issue but if they try to make new characters to bother you with starting from dawn trail they won't be able to do that similar to the blacklist we also have a new feature a mute list has been added and um, this can be found under the social tab in the main menu. Messages from muted players. Muting will apply to all characters tied to the muted character's service account. While their messages cannot be seen, if they are members of your party or alliance, a notification will be displayed when they speak during duties. 
players can also save comments regarding muted characters. Temporary display of muted messages. After receiving a notification of muted messages, players may elect to temporarily see what was written via the subcommand menu. So this mute thing seems to be kind of what the previous blacklist was, where you won't be able to see what they said, but you probably will still be able to see their character, their character's body. They have also added a term filter, which allows players to mask messages containing specific words from the chat log. Once registered to the term filter, any messages containing designated words can be hidden from the chat log. Display of filter terms. The term filter can be applied to hide the display of registered words in one of two ways. Display the applicable term filter's number. A system message will be displayed indicating the term filter applied to the chat log. Example, message could not be displayed due to term filter 1. The second option is to hide the affected message in its entirety. Messages containing a registered word will be completely hidden, so you won't even know that they were said, apparently. Registering words to the term filter. Words can be registered to the term filter in one of two ways. Players can freely register words as they see fit via the term filter list window. Or select a desired word in the chat log, then register it via the subcommand menu. Half width and full width spaces, as well as words from the auto translation dictionary cannot be registered. I don't know what they mean by half width and full width spaces. What is that? What is that? Up to 10 words can be registered to the term filter list, each with its own individual settings. Shout, yell, say, tell custom emotes. Saving registered words, term filter settings are saved locally. When playing on a different platform, words you wish to be filtered must be registered anew. Players can now use the mouse to drag and drop actions onto or off of the W cross hotbar. Supplementary explanations of graphical options have been added to the display settings in the system configuration menu, so you'll be able to open this little exclamation thing and find out more. The following additions and adjustments have been made to the system configuration menu on Windows and Mac. First, we have frame rate settings. So I think instead of, because before it would give you like weird values, like mine would give me like 70 instead of 60. So now it looks like you're going to get 60 and 30. And they're also adding more settings. This looks similar to what we see in the benchmark where you can choose some options with your resolutions such as NVIDIA DLSS. There's also options for grass, edge smoothing, shadow quality, texture detail effects, and then wet surfaces here, map resolution, texture detail effects. So I think with the new graphics update, we're just getting all these new options to customize and hopefully allow us to run the game well on our systems based on what we choose for all these settings. And they're doing something similar for PlayStation and Xbox, but it just doesn't look quite as in depth as the PC version does. They have also added a bunch of text commands or added adjustments to text commands so that they can do more. We talked about the faceware earlier and they added that. The mute list, the term filter, so all of those are getting added as well. And a really big one here with the text commands. The following text commands can now be used to adjust volume levels even during events such as cutscenes. So you can change master volume and background music. Sometimes I turn my background music off because it's annoying. And then I can't turn it on during a cutscene and that's always super annoying so we'll be able to do all of these during cutscenes which is super duper nice. And that's pretty much it for all of the quality of life updates coming in 7.0 at least what is listed here in the preliminary patch notes and I hope that this was helpful to you. Please leave a comment letting me know which quality of life update you are most excited for. I don't even know which one. There's so many good ones. I feel like the blacklist is going to be so nice. I don't even like need to blacklist that many people. Like I, don't, I mostly just blacklist the people that are like selling like RMT stuff because they're annoying. But also the housing thing, like the dyes. There's so much great stuff coming. So let me know what you're most excited about in the comments. And as always, please consider leaving a sacrifice for Lord Algorithm in the form of a like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to my channel members for supporting me. Bye!